he said that for real? I mean, that's that's what I would say. Absolutely. 100% that's what I would say. Yeah, without a doubt. Of course. Of course. Uh, of course. Hey, man, I'm about to record a video. Can you keep it down for just a little bit? Yeah, man, no problem. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's fine. It's what he's just, he's just making a stupid YouTube video. What's going on? My name's Jay, and today I'm going to show you how to clone yourself in DaVinci Resolve. Let's take a look. All right, first things first, if you're here and you're watching this, but you actually use Premiere Pro and you're wondering how to clone yourself there, I've got a link in the description for a video by one of my favorite new creators. Her name is Leela. She's absolutely fantastic. Make sure you click the link, watch that video, and then go watch the rest of her videos because she's fantastic. For the rest of you, cloning actually takes a little bit of time. So let's just jump into the tutorial, shall we? The first thing that you want to keep in mind when you're cloning yourself in a video is that you actually want to try and do all of your takes for all of your characters, all of your clones in one continuous shot. For example, in the scene that you just saw, when I shot that, the camera never stopped rolling. I went and I did the me walking out of the bedroom and asking the guy to be quiet. And then I went with the camera still rolling and I sat down on the couch and started talking on my phone. The camera was going the entire time. It was one continuous shot. The reason why we want to do this is because in post, it's gonna make one, color grading much easier. It's gonna make masking much easier. Everything's gonna line up right off the bat. So when you start doing all of your tweaking, nothing's gonna really seem out of place. And once you have your shot, it's time to put it into DaVinci Resolve and start cloning people. So let's jump in. All right, we are here in DaVinci Resolve. I've got my clip in my timeline. This is my one continuous shot. And the first thing that we're gonna do is make our cuts wherever we need them. So the first thing that I wanna do is actually snag a little bit of the room with nobody in it. That should be good. We'll go ahead and make a cut there. And then we're gonna find the beginning and the end of the part where I'm walking down the hallway. So now I've got my three clips. I've got a clip of the room with nobody in it, a clip of me walking down the hall and asking me on the couch to be quiet, and then a clip of me on the couch talking on the phone. The next thing to do is mark the interaction points. There's points in this scene where I'm interacting with myself and I want those to actually line up. So I'm gonna set markers wherever the interaction points are. And that's good right about there. So what we're gonna do is highlight both the audio and the video clips. We're gonna go ahead and hit M to set a marker on the clip. Then we're gonna move on to the clip of me on the couch. That looks good right about there. Same thing, highlight the clips, hit M for marker, and we're ready to start lining things up. Now, one thing that you want to keep in mind when you're doing this is which clip is gonna have the easier mask? Which one's gonna be easier to trace? For me, it's the clip of me on the couch. So that's what's gonna be on the top track. So we're gonna go ahead, take the clip of me on the couch, put it up to video two, drag the audio from that clip down to audio two, and we're gonna go ahead and line up the markers from the clip of me on the couch with the markers from the clip of me walking down the hall. And then once you have those lined up, it's just a matter of adjusting everything so everything sounds natural and I'm actually gonna be moving these clips around just a little bit. That looks good. Let's go ahead and extend me coming down the hallway so everything ends at the same point. Go ahead and trim up the clip of nobody in the room real quick. Get everything back to the beginning of the timeline and now we're moving on to the color page. All right, once we're in the color page, we need to create a mask so that both of us can show up in the frame at the same time. So in order to do that, we're gonna go into our power windows. We're gonna go down to the pen tool and what we're gonna do is we're gonna trace me sitting on the couch, leaving enough room for a feather. And then we're gonna go up to our nodes and we're gonna right click and we're gonna hit add alpha output and we're gonna draw a line from the blue square on the mask to the alpha output. And now you can see I've now shown up walking down the hall and I'm still sitting on the couch. The only problem is if we scrub to closer to the end of the interaction where I'm walking away from the camera, you'll see that my shadow 
is completely cut off where the mask is. And that just won't do. So what we need to do is adjust the softness of our mask just a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create an inside feather first. I'm gonna drag that in. And the really cool thing about DaVinci Resolve is you can actually fully control the size of your feather. So I can go to each one of these feather points and drag them closer to me if I want, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. And then we're gonna create an outside feather and we're gonna drag that out. We're actually gonna back up in our clip a little bit and see just how far my fingers come over when I'm standing in the hallway. Right there. We're gonna bring our outside feather as far as we can to that point. And then we're gonna extend this outside feather as far as it will go. Now, if we go back to the edit page and play that back. You said that for real? I mean, that's, that's what I would say. Absolutely, 100% that's what I would say. Yeah, without a doubt, of course. Of course, of uh, course. Hey man, I'm about to record a video. Can you keep it down for just a little bit? Yeah man, no problem. Cool, thanks. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's fine. It's what, he's just, he's just making a stupid YouTube video. Once you're done doing all that, the next step is to color grade. And the best way to do that is to use adjustment clips. If you wanna learn more about adjustment clips, click this video right here, or you can click this playlist, which has all sorts of DaVinci Resolve tutorials. And if you wanna learn more about video editing, camera gear, and how to make better videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next video, right there.